the 12 new candidates in the habitable zone, one of them is Kepler 452b, and um, another seven of them are around solar type stars. And so a lot of them are very interesting uh, candidates. For example, one of them appears to be just maybe 15% larger than Earth, orbiting a star just 200 Kelvin or 200 degrees cooler than our sun and receiving about three-fourths the energy that Earth does. Um, and, so, and so there's a lot of other ones similar to that that are really tantalizing to go after. Um, but again, they're, they're just candidates that really need that follow-up data. Um, and I want to highlight that there's a lot of teams all around the world that really do an excellent job that pour a lot of dedication into following up these candidates. You know, Kepler finds them, um, but it's a worldwide effort to really nail them down and confirm them. Um, so, you know, these candidates are very interesting, but uh, time will tell, you know, we'll see if they stand the test of time. But if they do, um, there's some really interesting discoveries on the horizon. Well, with me now is our science correspondent, uh, Rebecca Morell. Rebecca, uh, plenty, uh, we're just hearing from Jeff Coughlin, plenty of sort of ifs and buts. How significant do you think this is? It is quite exciting. I mean, we haven't found an exact twin for the Earth. This isn't an exact replica, but out of this latest haul of 500 new possible planets, the one in there that looks really exciting is 452 B. It's a bit bigger than the Earth, about 50% bigger, but it's its star really that looks so similar to the Sun. It's about the same size, same brightness. Importantly, the little planet orbits at about the same distance that we orbit from the Sun, and that puts it in this so-called Goldilocks zone. So the idea is if it had water on its surface, it would be not too close to the sun where the water would boil away and not too far away from the sun where it would freeze. It's, it's just right, you know, like Goldilocks porridge, you know, it, it could be liquid water like on Earth. And that's what's really exciting about this, this discovery. Mm, not Goldilocks like the fairy tale. Though. No. <laughs> um, uh, the sun, though, how similar is it? I mean, do they know that it's the same sort of temperature, I emitting the same sort of heat? I think it's a little bit older, isn't it, than it's, the sun? It's a bit older. So it's, it's about 4% more massive, 10% brighter, but 1.5 billion years is older than the sun so actually as the sun as stars get older they get brighter so it's it's kind of a bit, a bit like um, future gazing you know looking at what's happening with that planet now is a bit like kind of throwing forward to what might be happening in say a billion years here on earth I mean the slight problem with this of course even if they found a planet which was exactly the same as the earth you know had that had water on there had the right chemicals actually you know going to see it would be a problem I mean this one is 1400 light years <laughs> away and even our best telescopes at the moment we can't even probe the atmosphere we are going to get some better telescopes coming on board like the James Webb Space Telescope which is a successor for Hubble that's going to allow us to look at some some more detail I mean not the surface features but we can look at the kind of the elemental makeup of the atmosphere, maybe see if there's water vapour in the atmosphere too, but that's not going to be for a few years. So we're going to keep on discovering, you know, the best candidates yet, but actually finding out what's really on there is going to take a bit more time. 